Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So I'm back working on my little panel for the Vintage Blend Studio project which is all about vintage sewing techniques and this one is ribbon embroidery. So I just did a little rose here and the technique I used I spotted on um, Susanna's video when she was flipping through those books that she was showing. And the rose is wound around five spokes. So it sort of reminds me a little bit of the wagon wheel um, or spider web stitch where you put in place your five spokes and then weaving, weaving around. The first time I did this was years ago when I did the Anne Brooks 52 tags and um, one of the prompts was the spider web stitch so you start by laying down five evenly placed spokes like so <clears throat> now if you had um, embroidery cotton you could just use that and weave it around so I did a little bit of that in the Nikki Franklin stitching piece that I did recently. She had little little flowers that were made that way. But I'm going to use it this time with this ribbon. And that's how that one was created. So up comes the ribbon. That's a bit hard to pull through because it's such a thick ribbon so just let me get a bit of come on just not wanting to come through this this style of ribbon allows you to oh, I'm trying to get through thread the spokes as well let me just manipulate that a little better no need to make it hard on ourselves and come through <clears throat> thread as well as fabric. So I might go to a completely different spot. I was wondering why there was so much restriction there. It's because I was trying to pull it through fabric, wadding, as well as thread. There we go, go through. Now that should not need to go back through now until the end. So I'm just going to re-thread my needle. I suppose you're wondering what's happening with Casper and Bandit for that matter. Yesterday's video, I told you that Casper was down a drain out the front of the house. We have a 24 hour rain period coming, so it was very concerning. <clears throat> of course, he is still down the drain. It rained on and off all day, but it didn't get real heavy. So at any time, he just had a stream passing by him. But the silly cat is still down the drain. Why won't that thread? Oh, goodness me. So I had a shocking day. I was down the drain for an hour or so. Like, I've got to get a ladder to get down there. There are other points at which he can easily get out. That's the whole crazy thing about this. The cat can get out. He's done it before. But he's still down the drain. So I went to bed last night. I could hear the rain coming and I thought, oh, if he makes it through the night, it'll be a miracle. Because... Um, if it gets really heavy, there'll be a foot of water in that drain. The drain hole itself, the tunnel of which he's in, is probably half a metre. But a foot of metre, like 30 centimetres of water, would be a bit of a problem, I would have thought. So I could hear the rain and I thought, oh boy, if I have a cat by the morning, this will be a miracle. So I just went out there and he's there, he's fine. Yeah, he comes to the main manhole and looks at me, meows, and then walks back in. And at one point I got down into that manhole and he would not come to me. And I managed to get down on my hands and knees to a point where I could actually look into the tunnel. 
and I'd been there an hour and I could see his silhouette and he was probably about three meters away from me down the tunnel and he was actually looking in the other direction so the whole time I'm calling him he's not even looking at me he's looking in the other direction so that made me that made me Scotty I was like right you are just being a bugger but having the rain coming it just oh it stressed me all day I couldn't stop thinking about him and I'm thinking um he's gonna drown and then I thought well if the water comes it'll lift him up and he'll easily get out it's just ludicrous these animals I swear so anyway like I said I went to bed I could hear the rain very soft through the night and um, I went out there this morning he's still meowing he's still you know he, he puts on quite a meow when I first get there and then it goes real quiet and then he just stops answering me so I left him I thought right soon your tummy is gonna be wanting you to have breakfast or dinner and you can come out when you're ready and it's one of those drains where there's multiple exits and the some of the other exits are quite easy to get out like they're probably only a meter deep and the one that I'm climbing into is probably two and a half meters which technically is a bit probably high for him to jump up but he's done it before they just I don't know what's his story he's enjoying the fact that I'm down there with him and we're having a great old time who knows so pretty much I've just yapped my way through that and you probably have no idea what I'm actually doing here so you've probably tuned out and gone mm, this girl's odd she doesn't even talk about what she's doing <laughs> she's banging on about a cat so I've finished the flower actually so I'm, I'm sort of weaving around around the spokes over and under over and under and just leaving a little loose so that I get this petal like effect and that's it so nice and simple and being that it's hard to pull this needle and th ribbon through the fabric it's good because I only have to do it at the very beginning and then at the very end and to so that I don't have to come through here again because it is hard I'm just trying to achieve a knot that I can slide down into position so that I don't have to come back through the fabric. This satin is, um, that didn't quite work. Let's try that again. The knot's a bit too high. Yeah, the satin ribbon is quite firm. It's beautiful when it's done into roses. And I suspect looking at the other roses that are on, on the um, original little piece, I have a feeling that that's how they've done them. Let's get that down to the fabric level. So basically, the cat is still in the drain. He's not looking like he wants to come out just yet. So I am not going to stress any more about it. I spent all of yesterday worrying about it. Standing in the rain, I got absolutely drenched to, to no result. He won't come to me. He's, he just sits there and looks at me. At one point, I had him in the main area where he can just jump out. And he just sat there. He just meowed. He, he seemed distressed, but he didn't jump. You could see he was thinking about it, but he was like, oh, there could be something scary out there. So I sort of felt like if the, if he thinks there's something scary, he's not making that leap. I don't know. I've analysed it to the nth degree. So I'm just going to give him quiet now and not bug him. So it gets to the point where he goes, all right, I'm going out myself. So that's my theory anyway, but I'm sure... In the hour, I'll be back out there to check on him. Now that the rain's gone, I don't feel so bad. He can sit out there as long as he wants. He's got plenty of water because there's a little trickle going through. It's not hot. It's not cold. See how I'm analysing everything? These animals, I swear. 
Now, as for Mr. Bandit, as you know, you would have heard in yesterday's video, he has developed kennel cough. Poor fellow. So I got a doctor's appointment for both of them because it says that it's very contagious and um, if Bandit gets it, Pepper probably will. So off to the vet we go. And because it was raining, I had two wet dogs to get into the back of the car. So very pleasant. I was already wound up about Mr. You-Know-Who in the drain. But they were brilliant. They sat on the back seat like perfect angels. I dried them off the best I could with a towel because they'd been out goosing around. So when the vet said, you know, is he um, lethargic? No, he's been playing in the rain. Is he off of his food? No. Has he got a discharge out of his nose? No. Um, he coughs probably twice every hour. So she said, look, that's very mild and he'll be over it within four to 10 days, depending on the severity of the actual bronchial um, infection. So she just recommended we just keep an eye on him. And if he starts to slip, as in looking like there's a discharge out of his nose, well then antibiotics would be, antibiotics would be used. What happened there? I broke my needle. Oh my goodness, look, I completely took the top out of the needle. This ribbon embroidery, it's hard work. So the good news is, Bandit is doing okay. He's got cough mixture. I bet I don't have another good size needle. He's got cough mixture to soothe his throat and reduce the coughing, which seems to have helped a lot. He's also got, um, I give him a little bit of honey. He licks that off his bowl and that um, soothes his throat. She said he won't have a sore throat as such. It's all in the bronchial tracts, apparently. So she was happy enough just to let him be for now. And um, this morning I went out to feed them and he ate his breakfast, no problems. They're out trotting around or down the back of the block. They're not running. They've definitely calmed a little. Even he wasn't jumping up like a lunatic to get his breakfast with excitement. Um, Pepper coughed. So now Pepper has this little barky cough. So yeah, there we go. We've now got two dogs with kennel cough and a cat still in the drain and a needle that won't go. Oh, that did. Won't go through easily. So let's, let's show you this properly. Now that you've caught up on all my pet woes. So I'm over here. There's a spike. There's a spike. So we're going to go over this one and under this one. To make it a bit easier, I always push the top of the needle through, not the point. Just ensures that you don't catch it with the needle and be trying to drag your thread through. So we're now under this guy. Here's the next spoke. We're going to go over him and we're going to go under that one. So that's it. And just work your way around your little five spoke flower that you've pre-stitched. The main thing is you've got to have even even spokes. It won't work if you do four or six. You're going to do five or seven. So once again, we're under that guy. We're going to skip this guy. We're going to go under this guy. And being the ribbon is so thick, we actually don't need to do many spokes, which is really good. And you can do them as tight and as loose as you want to get different sized flowers. So the first one I did really loose. Next one I did reasonably tight. And this one I'm going to do even quite tight just to see what they all look like. So over, under. So I'm presuming I'm going to have pretty much a similar day today. Worrying myself sick about a cat down the drain listening to two dogs bark and cough. It's just horrible. I feel a bit better knowing that uh, the rain is gone, so Pussy's really fine. He can come out whenever he's happy to come out. And 
I've been to a vet to get an opinion and, and an understanding of this this kennel cough. So I'm just watching now for deterioration and they both ate their breakfast, so I feel okay. I might get some stitching done today. Just couldn't couldn't do anything. I was sitting on the couch last night and I knew I should be doing something. It's always something to stitch. And um I said to my husband, I said, I just can't. I said, I feel mentally, emotionally drained. I had some dinner. I didn't even cook dinner. We ordered a pizza. I said, I just don't. Oh, that's pretty. They're nice, small. That's the first one. I'm sort of a bit of an odd shape. That there could be tucked in. I might put a, a stitch in that later just to... Get the shape of that grub rose a little better. He's good. That's a little tiny one. Aren't these good? And I will actually get a couple more out of this. So my little piece of ribbon is actually going quite a distance. Get that knot down there. Okay, so I might leave that little scrap in case I want to do something else. But what I want to do is I've got a second one here. Now I was going to do a second style of rose out of this, but it would require it to go in the fabric a lot. So, or through a lot, so I'm not going to. I will do another wheel because it's just too hard to pull through. If it was silk, yeah, but I've got satin ribbon here and it's quite, quite firm. So what I'll do is stick with that same style of flower because it's just not going to be easy to push through. Let's get some spokes in. We need five. And we'll just pop a few of these darker caramel little roses in around. And then that'll be the ribbon side of it done. I'm yet to stitch some green stems in to catch all those little blue buds that we did yesterday. But that'll happen when I'm finished placing all of these additional roses in to bulk up our piece so we'll do one more and then i want to explore adding some oh goodness me it's all fluffy i want to explore adding some bits of doily in amongst it just to create a more full floral display i think there's an opportunity to really bouquet it out that's not a big enough spoke i want to do that that one again so that was my day Today is similar. Hopefully Mr. Casper decides to saunter back in when he's ready. We've got the men coming out to fix the big electric gate that's at the front. And that's why Casper got out in the first place because it didn't close properly. Now it won't even open or close. So we, we go to the vet and we got out, but when we come back, the gate wouldn't open. And it had finally um, died. So today the man's coming out. Now he was here probably a month ago fixing the gate because it was mucking around then. And he put WD-40 on it, charged us $500 and said it was all, all fixed. And my husband was like, I don't know. I'm thinking that's not quite the problem. 
Sure enough, now the gate's mucking around again. And it was when he was here fixing the gate that Casper got out. That's when I was over in Paris and he spent, I think it was four days or a week down the drain. And my husband was just beside himself trying to get this cat back, who was not interested in coming, especially not to my husband. He's very wary of everyone. And then he just turned up one night if to say, I'm home, what's for dinner? So we're sort of confident he will come home. But what was worrying me yesterday was that rain. Last time there was no rain. It was just a beautiful sunny weather. And he just, he even had a mouse while he was down there. My husband heard him because my husband spent hours down this drain. And he's a big guy, like it would have been so uncomfortable. It's bad enough for me. And he could hear him crunching a mouse. So, oh, I tell you. The only thing that's in the back of my mind is that bit of rain last night got him wet. And he gets a little bit of hypothermia. I don't know if that happens in cats. It would a human but we don't have a fur coat, do we? I don't know. Stop thinking about it. There's nothing I can do. And the whole street's been out discussing options and none of us have come up with anything. There's about 10 houses, so I've pretty much said hello to all the neighbours as they've come home to their homes and found Corinne with a head out of a drain. <laughs> in the gutter or just sitting in the gutter <laughs> the one neighbor she comes she's on the top side of us so I'm further down the street she can see me sitting on the on the verge on the grass with my feet on the bitumen you know just sitting there and Casper's down the pipe chatting away to me and I'm going puss 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 and she drives down she goes are you all right and I said she goes oh the cat I said, yes, the cat. And she said, is there anything we can do? And I said to her, maybe a cut sandwich for the homeless person sitting in the street. And she's just laughing her heads off, head off. I'm like, there's nothing we can do. I said, he's just doing what he wants to do at this stage. So, yeah. Good old Casper. Meanwhile, we'll keep stitching. That's really pretty, that colour. It's really knocking back that lemony tone. So I think that's pretty good. Let's go around again. So that went under, so that one's got to go over. And that one is then the under. Oh, how pretty. That one under, that one over. That one goes under. Under, over. Under. I like how you can make then the rows as small as as big as you like really like that and I love the fact that I'm not forcing the ribbon back through the fabric I think that see that leaf there see that there I think have I missed a spike oh, no under over under I thought maybe I'd got the it's just a bit loose that's what's the problem just a little bit loose I should have been a little bit tighter with it that's better so where are we at we went under so we got to go over and this one is an under here we go for time we're fine that might Under, 
over under oh, I love it there we go so let's get him back through the back there's no obstructions get this here Try not to take an eye out. Insert the needle into my arm. All right. Beautiful. And now we can do a little knot. So what I'll do is I'll definitely work a few more of these into my piece, but I'll leave it at that for now. And like I sometimes do, I'll come back at the end of the video. I'll definitely use that last little piece. I'll put some more of these uh, dark caramel roses through. So let's put that in there for later. Now, <clears throat> and I can definitely fit more, you know, through the whole piece. So. I'll, I'll really rose that up. I think I could comfortably do the stitch needed to catch these little blue guys in. Yeah. So I might just do a little stem stitch. And then we'll have a look at... Come on, that needle's a bit small. Let's get a proper needle. Here we go. So we'll just, <clears throat> oh, I might even just do a split stitch. One stitch and then come up little bit further down and go through that first stitch about halfway along go straight through that original stitch again <clears throat> come back down here and then go straight through that stitch so it sort of gives you a nice thick stem and because you're going through that first stitch you're sort of hiding the fact that your needle is coming up and through so now I'm going to come back up here and put a stitch in that connects that second little bud into it so now we've got a bit of green stem work happening to catch all the little blue ribbon buds so that will work a treat Let's do this guy. And then and I can disappear that stem in under that rose. That's it. And then catch the second bud, the blue bud, and bring it into that first line of green stitch. So it looks like it's part of it. Finish it off. So that's that one. Now I'll do these three over here. So we got start at the furthest one and we're working our way back like so I 
branching all of those three into one little branch. Flick the needle off. Okay, a couple stitches and that little guy will be I might come back up here and grab this one before I get too far away from that little bud. That's got him. And then that one there. And that one there. Okay, so he's now attached to some degree. He looks a bit odd sitting out there like that, but if I was to put one of those ribbon roses, where is it, about there, that would make that look a little less, like it's just a weird little bit hanging out. Sort of looks a bit, bit odd. That one looks good, that one looks good. So the same here, once I bring those in, I'll then put some ribbon roses around here, another one in here, I'll just start building it up. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to do, so green cotton can go in my to be completed little pile of tricks. So I wanna get some normal cotton and I wanna have a play with, where's a needle? I'll have a play with some of these crocheted little bits. So let's assume we put a rose there. So what I'm thinking is I've got a little half piece of a crocheted motif. So these are the little bits that would connect a bigger bit when you're crocheting. So if you wanted to join, you'd have a little little guy in amongst bigger guys. So I've then cut it in half, and I'm wondering if I can gather it a little. That's it. To make it more of a tighter clump, because our little piece is so small, I don't need them that big. But if I was to cut it down anymore, it might look a bit odd. So now it's a little smaller piece. And I'm wondering if I can stitch that. Come here. trying to find the right spot I think that will do it it's fiddly I just want to pop a few of these around as a, create a little bit more interest to our bouquet I'm just going to stitch it down like so and then the little grub rows can sit in So what we might do is we'll make another one. So when I cut up a table runner, you get all of these little bits. So I'll just keep them all. There's another, another one there. So once again, I will Bring it in. And then gather it a little, just a little bit. Helps give it a bit of shape. back to where we were doing these little flowers and let's insert it 
into there. So I'm just going to lift, lift that rose petal there. And just tuck him in and stitch him down. It's just a little little tuft of crocheting through it as well, like so. And that's it. So while I've got this needle threaded, I might have a look at some of these little sequins. But I'm going to need a finer needle. So that will work. Got this little tuft in there. See that there? Just that little 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 bit. Another little bit down here. It'll really thicken this up, make it quite interesting. So what I'm thinking is, see where these French knots are that they had on this original piece? It's a little bit sparse there. And they're not connected to this branch. So I thought I would do a bit of beading there. So let's have a play with a couple of these. They're like a little flower sequin and the colour's really good. Oh, wrong needle. This one. See what I mean? Really cute. Now we need something to go inside. Do we do a pearl? Tempted to do a big pearl. Will it cover the bee too much or the sequin too much? Let's have a look. It is a big guy, but gee, go bold. It's probably a bit big. I wonder if I've got a smaller pearl. Because I do like the look of the pearl. It sort of picks up on that pearl button. Here. He's better. Yeah. So we've now got a, a bead in the center of the little flower. Try and get two stitches in there. Stand him up. Yeah, like that. There we go. So then we could probably, because that bead has a sister, put him in the pile. We could put some little ones. Of the same family around so we're creating like a little cluster of like beads and things now I wonder to bring that white in that that little crocheted element is I'm thinking I might put one of our big beads in so there's white ribbon here on the original piece. I've added some white crocheting. I think I could do easily a whitish bead just to make this cluster look a little bit more interesting. I did have out these blue beads as well. I may 
maybe maybe this dark one. Let's have a look. Yeah. It's like he's similar to the little flower. It's maybe it represents the little flower that hasn't opened yet. Yeah, I like that. So we're just creating a little bit of a... I don't think we'll bother with them. Um, I need a couple more little guys. So now... We've got a little beady cluster thing happening around those French knots. And I'll just soften the piece with a heap of little guys. I'll just sort of get those few big pieces in, then just pop a heap of little beads around just to soften the edges of the cluster. Like so. All right, guys, I'm going to have to pause the video for a second. I can hear someone at the door, but I might go. Probably be someone returning a cat. Um, I might go, and when I come back, I will have finished the beading, got some more of them in, added some more ribbon roses and just kept building up this piece so that it's all embellished. All right, I will pause the video and I will see you in a second. Bye. Hi guys, I'm back. So it was just a delivery, it wasn't the cat, but I've sat back down and just continued on and I was going to just, you know, finish it and then come back with it finished, but I decided to remove the bead that was in that original little flower. I'll show you why. I just felt like I didn't show off the possibilities of that little flower with that scalloped edge, the little sequin, the blue one. And then I remembered I had picked up these itty bitty off-white sequins. So I'm just stitching another flower in at the top of that cluster and I'll show you. Now, I got them on my retreat. I've never seen them before. So I'm not sure where I could direct you to get them. Um, you could check out Forager's website, but I didn't see sequins there. You could probably shoot a main message if you really wanted them. So these little... So I removed that guy. He's just a bit too big and I'm going to put him away because I like the idea of the random pearl and the random blue bead being my two little highlight beads. So they're definitely in. They're definitely in because they're like the little finishing touch. And then I've got my little flower sequin. They need to go into a container. That's the bag that I bought them in. So I need to put them into something before it's a disaster there is a code on them both um, cs145 and cs6 now this six i'm just going to seal the bag because these are tiny and i when i first saw them i thought oh what would i ever use them for so i put them back and then a couple of days went by and I, I thought right let's just have a good look at these sequins because they're all very sort of different different shapes, different colours. So I end up just grabbing a little range, little blue, bluey green circles. So what I did was I removed that bead and I put into the centre of that blue flower the little cream sequin. And now you can really see the flower so, so much better. So I still have this little cluster building and then I took a little bead down the stem. And then when I got here, there was a gap between the original satin leaf and their stitching. So it was a funny little gap there. So I ended up putting a bead and then creating this flower. And that's when I glanced across my table and saw that little, little cream circle sequin. And then I went back and I snipped out this guy, restitched it, 
put a few stitches through the whole cluster again just to sort of make sure it didn't all unravel and then I ended up putting another little flower at the top there so it sort of finishes that little little spray so that is where I'm at so I'm pretty happy that this is all finished I've caught that what I might do is with my needle and thread that flower looks a little plain so I might come in here next so I'm just going to start at one end now and methodically work my way through the whole piece and that way I won't miss anything so I wonder how one of these oh maybe I'll go the bigger one that I rejected earlier let's have a look at this guy yeah let's put this in the center that'll put a pop of blue and because it's a very big satin flower from the original piece i think it can handle it yep definitely there we go so now the original flower has something in it do three stitches because it is a big bead okay and I might bring my needle up over here now see this little stem coming out from the original let's just pop on there some of our little generic cream beads as if they're like little nodules on the side of that stem and just stitch a few of those down as well. That'll help sort of get that continuity through the piece. I just sort of work out of a bit of a plan for each stem or each little spot. It's just a case of hit repeat and work your way through your piece. And the great thing is, is I still have left this little one. So I can pick it up another day and do more stitching on it, maybe a different colour scheme. Take out the blue. And the blues only come into this one because of the blue fabric that's in the perimeter of it all. Where's my... So I'm pretty confident now and I have a plan. Look how pretty that is. How that's just lifted that piece. Oh, I love stitching flowers. It'd probably be my favourite. Just embellishing someone who's gone before me, creating this beautiful floral piece and to be honest it was rescued from an off shop so that's even better and then coming through and adding some more details okay so there we go we've got a bit of a plan coming through so I'll just pick up here with another rose probably a few more little cream beads here's another cluster so I'll work that cluster there can it really come out like we have there a couple more flowers this stem here coming out this feather stitch that's interesting I might end up adding more feather stitch when I finish come back and put some more of that through because there's only the one on the whole piece is just there so we could definitely bring it out a little more okay all right I will leave you now and I'll go and have a little play do you like that I just love the colours, the cream, the blue and the green. It's very pretty. All right, guys, I think I have a plan. Put all those goodies in there, plus some little, and I really need to get a new bag because it's split. Put a few more little half bits in. I'm sure there's some more in there. If not, I can cut. There's one. That should be plenty. I won't need too many more. There's another one. Okay. All right. 
I will leave you alone and I will see you in a second and this piece will be completed. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Hello everyone. I'm back and I'm finished. I've sat here for probably about an hour and just finished stitching all of the clusters that were around the French knots. I um, then drifted just scattering little beads from everywhere that we were, you know, from the whole collection through the center. That sort of just gels the whole piece together. Added another little bit of doily there. Um, finished all the stems, bringing all of those little blue um, buds that we put in back into the piece. Um, I then went and did some little white fly stitches around just to, just to add that sort of softness to it like this guy. I haven't repeated him at all because I don't have the thread that they've used. It was, I searched everywhere and I couldn't find anything. It's got a really lovely luster on it so I might just keep my eyes open and if I do come across that thread I can always come back into the piece and you know add a few more feather stitches but I honestly think I've got enough. I'm really, really pleased with it. I finished using all of the um, creamy uh, coffee colored ribbon. And then I had a little bit left of the original cream and I got that little guy in there. So out of those few scraps, I think I got one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five of the golden one. So um, the other thing I did add is these little blue flowers. I just sort of did a couple here and there as if this sprig was a combination of the little pearl and the blue flower. And then when you got to the big cluster where those big French knots were, that was like a big, big uh, grouping of them. So I'll bring it up to the camera so you can get a bit of a closer look and you can sort of just see the scattering, especially um, in here. Just the scattering, little 3D dimensional piece there. A little bit more scattering. There's a cluster. Cluster up here. Yeah, and it's stitched out here onto that piece of um, scrapbook paper. It's like a quite a firm paper. I think if you ever decide to put paper within your embroidery, just make sure you print it onto something that's quite heavy duty. It'll just help it hold the thread. Happy with the button. That worked out really well. And little bunny. So it's like the little boy is sitting in his cart reading his little book. There's his pet rabbit. Really happy with the way the piece came together. So I'm just going to grab my little book. How well does it merge or blend with the other piece on the other side? Let me come up a little bit. Beautiful, really happy with that. So that there will be stitched onto that. I'll just pop a couple pins there. And it'll be just a case of a couple little slip stitches comes through. And then the piece is now forever in the little book. And the good thing about little slip stitches to attach your work to these pages is um, you, you don't need to um, worry. If you want to take the piece out, you can. It's, they're very easy just to get your, your um, your scissors in underneath there and just slip it out. So there you go. So I'll just slip around the perimeter and that'll attach all of those pages together. And it's forever part of my journal. So there you go. So I'm not sure what the next one is. So let's have a little look. Let's see if I've got, I think it was um, crazy, crazy quilting from memory. That'll be, that'll be August. Crazy patchwork. There we go. A doily or a floral piece of fabric for the center piece and then working around the outside with scrap fabrics left over from previous blocks, add some lace, some buttons, embellishment as you wish. So that'll be fun. I haven't done that for a long time. So page wise, 
So the book is now complete there. We're on to the second signature. We've got that little one to consider. So we've got one, two, and we still have a signature left for whatever in the future. So heaps, heaps of room. Excellent. All right, everyone, I'm going to leave you alone now. And thank you very much for joining me on the journey of that piece. And uh, it's found its home in my little vintage sewing techniques journal. Okay, look after yourselves. Bye for now.